Hello, my name is Anthony Wooler and I'm an Applications Engineer with Go Engineer. In this video, I'm going to cover how to create a K-Blend of a SOLIDWORKS service model of a bicycle frame. I already have a sketch set up for the purpose of creating a trim surface feature. On the right hand side, you can see it's a series of lines and arcs connected together. On the left end are two straight line segments. When creating a trim surface feature, using a sketch as a trim tool, the only applicable type is the standard trim type. Down below, I have the ability of keeping or removing selections based on the intersection of the sketch and the surface body geometry. In this example, I'll use the keep option. Looking at the body on the right hand side, the trim operation created multiple segments or edge segments and this is due based on how the sketch was created. When using a sketch with multiple segments where an end point meets up with a surface body it's going to create a edge break. On the left end I have two single edges due to the fact that I use single line segments. What I really need are individual edges on these two tubes so I could use for individual loft segments. To achieve that I'm going to edit the sketch. I'm going to use the SOLIDWORKS split entities tool and break up the individual line segments into multiple segments. What I could do next here is add dimensions to help control where the resulting edges will be created. After updating the sketch, now I have multiple edges that I can use for individual surface loft features. Accessing the lofted surface feature, the best practice is to pick like locations on the edges that you want to create a loft between so that the loft connectors do not cross over or get twisted. If that happens, you can simply move the connector to place them appropriately. Next step here, I'm going to add start and constraint conditions. So I'm going to use a curvature to face condition for both the start and end so that the resulting surface geometry maintains curvature with the entities that are bridging together. What you can also do is control the tangency length for the start and end. Either do that by dragging the arrows or keying in values on the left hand side. I'm just going to use a value of 2 for both the start and end. Continuing on, I'm going to create another loft feature to bridge the two tubes together on the left hand side of the model. What the system does, it does pick up the previous surface body, so I'm going to clear that out and make my edge selections. Same thing, I'll enable the curvature to the face option for both the start and end, and I'm going to key in a value of 3 for the start and end tangency lengths. Another way of accessing the surface law feature is making use of the recent commands list in the right click menu. And as before, I'm going to clear out the previous surface body and make the appropriate edge selections. Also, enabling the curvature of the face, start and end conditions for both profiles. This time, I'll use a value of 2 for both. What I need to do next here is essentially create a surface patch on either side of the model. And I'm going to do that using the Filled Surface feature. What you need to select here are patch boundaries, and these patch boundaries can be edges, sketches, or curve entities. So in this case here, I'll use Surface Edge Selections. After making the last edge selection, a preview will appear showing the surface. What you can do next is you can control the contact condition per edge, or I could use the option here, apply to all edges. So from the pull down list here, I have contact, tangent, and curvature. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add curvature to most of the edges, except for three of them. So I'm going to do that by, in this case, doing a shift selection on three of the edges to start with, switching the option from contact to curvature, 
and then I'll make my last two edge selections also apply curvature to as well. And essentially, I'll go through the same operation on the opposite side of the model. And again, I'll use the same curvature options for the same set of edges as before. To complete this shape, I'll go ahead and knit the five surface bodies I just created with the existing surface geometry created by the trim surface feature. So I can window select most of the bodies and then single click to add the additional bodies to that. And I do have a couple of gaps based on the surface lock features I created before. And the knit tool can knit those together for you to close the gaps. To investigate the smoothness of the resulting surfaces, what I could do here is use a zebra stripe display on the evaluate tab. When looking at zebra stripe display, I'm looking at the transition of the stripes from one surface to the next. And in areas where you have a curvature contact, you'll see a smooth transition across the boundary. Areas where you have contact, you actually will see the stripes not meet up. If there were tangent conditions when looking at zebra stripe display, what you would see is these stripes will line up, but there would be a sharp change in direction on the stripe from one surface to the next. Again, my name is Anthony Willer. I'm an applications engineer with Go Engineer, and thank you for watching this video.